can Lightworks match special effects with the likes of Adobe After Effects and DaVinci Resolve? Well, not really, but we can at least have a go today. Now, one of the problems we have making videos for YouTube is how to make them interesting. And if you're using Lightworks, you're really quite restricted as to what kind of special effects, if any, you can put into your videos. But today we're going to have a look at a really cool transition effect that I quite like. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is disable the audio because I don't want to deal with audio today. I've got a single video track. So what I'll do is I'll pick up this clip over here and drop it to V1. I'm going to right click and add another video track. And immediately I'm going to put this smaller clip of this lady writing on a notice board. Now I know this clip isn't exactly what you would put on YouTube, but you should get the effect of what I'm trying to do. Nevertheless, what we need to do is reduce the size of this picture and overlay it onto the screen of this little MacBook over here. That's actually quite easy. We need to go to VFX click on the plus and go to DVE. Now what we're going to do is throw a 3D DVE on top of our clip. Now we haven't dealt with 3D DVEs before. Now they're very similar to 2D DVEs, which we've done in our videos before, except now we add the third dimension, which is going to be the Z axis. Let's have a quick look over what a 3D DVE actually is. We can rotate a picture on the X, Y and Z axis. We can change the position on the X, Y and Z axis. We can crop and we can add shadow. I'm not going to add shadow today. What we're going to do is just grab our Z position. Now I'm saying Z because I'm from England originally. Uh, those of you who speak more American English would pronounce it as a Z. But on the Z axis, if I push and pull the slider, you can see the clip actually moves away. Think of this more like you're the camera person and you're moving away from the clip. So you're actually getting further and further away from the clip. But let's use that to our advantage. Let's pull that clip back a bit. Just taking my mouse inside the clip, let's move it over the MacBook screen. Now you can see it doesn't fit because it's not the same orientation. And that's why we need a 3D rotation here. We're going to go to the X rotation, click and drag it. Now here's a really cool tip. And this just about works on every program. If you find that it's too difficult to do fine tuning. In most programs, what you can do is click on a slider or a dial and move your mouse away. And what that lets you do is it gives you a finer control. So I'm going to just finally move this until, and I'm looking for a certain something, I'm looking to see when this line and this edge are parallel and when this line and this edge are parallel. I think I've done a pretty okay job. Let's move that down a bit and you can see that it obviously doesn't fit inside our computer screen. So what we're going to do is just increase the size of our picture, keep moving it down, increase the size of our picture and keep moving it down till it's about there. We're going to now go to the crop, crop the top of this picture like that and we're going to crop the bottom of this picture just there. Now it doesn't look so realistic because it's a sharp edge. So what we're going to do now is just go to our softness over here and just soften the edges a little bit. You can see that already adds a really cool effect, that little border. I'm going to crop it just a tad more at the top there. And I think if we now have a look at this, it looks pretty good. What we've got to remember is this effect is only going to be on the screen for a couple of seconds, no more. So let's press play. And you can see while the person's typing, the picture of this lady in the screen is actually moving as well. And we're going to now transition that screen, that's the computer screen, to become our full screen. So how do we do that? We need to take some keyframes. So let's keyframe X. Let's keyframe the X, Y, and Z position. Keyframe the top and bottom crop and keyframe the softness. Those are all the parameters that we just changed. On my keyboard, I'm going to press seven frames forward. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now what we're going to do is just reset everything back to where it was. Click inside the dial once, it will reset to zero. Our X and Y position are 0 0.5. 
and 0 0.5, like that. Our Z position is 0, because the camera is right up there. Our crop is going to be pulled back down to 0, and our edge softness is 0. Now, if we've done everything correctly, no, we haven't. You can just see my X position is off, because I wasn't paying attention there. Let's do that. That's better. Now, our picture is reset to the full screen. And when we rewind it, what we're going to have is this kind of effect. And I think that looks brilliant. Now, you might notice a little bit of lag on my computer. Now, just as a warning, doing this on an older, underpowered laptop is most likely going to have all the fans on and turn it into a barbecue of some kind. So do be warned, a light laptop might struggle doing this kind of work. I think that looks pretty good. Now, as a bit of a challenge, let's try a slightly different computer screen. So let's grab this one over here. Let's have a quick look at it. One really important thing about this effect is because Lightworks doesn't have any kind of 2D tracking, doesn't have any kind of compositing features built into it, as soon as that computer or this camera moves, this effect will completely get destroyed. We just don't have the ability to map one picture on top of another picture and follow a certain object on the screen. So it's really important that if you do try this effect, whether you're doing it from a computer screen or some other shape on the screen, you've really got to make sure that the camera or the object itself isn't moving. Now let's try the clip of this presenter. This is far more realistic to a YouTube video where you're talking to the screen. Let's do all the steps we did just now. Go to VFX, click on plus, make sure we pick up a 3D DVE, put it on top of the clip of the presenter. Let's zoom out. Let us put that in. Now you can see it's not as straightforward as our previous clip because we've got a couple of things happening. Our picture is at an angle and we've also got a bit of perspective shift. It's slightly smaller on this side and slightly bigger on this side. Now when it's slightly smaller on the left or the right, that is definitely a Y. So we're just going to do that tiny little bit there. Let's have a look. It looks a little bit bigger on the bottom edge than the top edge. So that's an X. So that would be going into the minuses slightly. And then we'll finish off with a Z rotation. I don't know. I might have actually got that first go, but let's have a go. Right. We can see that the Z's a bit off. Let's just zoom that up a bit just to make sure that we're not completely out. Okay. Now I think having a look at this, I think I got the Y a bit too far out. So let's just pull that back in a bit. Let's get some parallel edges. You can see that there. Just there. I'm going to have to compromise at some point. I can't get it perfect. But the best will in the world. Let's have a look. I think I'm just going to shift the Y a little bit more back to where it was. Let's just pull the mouse out a little bit and just fine tune that. Again, I'm looking for those parallel edges at the top and the bottom there I think I'm gonna to have to make a compromise and I'll make it there let's pull this up a bit more like this and let's just resize it so that it takes the height of the screen there I think that will be good let's go down to the crop crop the left edge in a bit not perfect and crop in the right that's a little bit better just going to adjust the X ever so slightly. And I think what I'll do is just leave it there. Now, this is a bit of a compromise, so you're never going to get it perfect. Let's soften the edge up a little bit like this and just adjust our crop so that it fits on both sides. Now, although that's not perfect, I think for the second or two it's going to be on the screen i'm really not going to spend too much more time fixing this there you go we're going to do the same thing here as the clip starts there remember give it only one or two seconds otherwise people will start examining your shot looking at all the flaws and all the edges so there we will keyframe the x the y 
the Z rotation, the X, the Y, and the Z position, the left and right crop, and the edge softness. So a lot of keyframes, I know. Let's forward it seven frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. And we are now going to zero out all those settings. Click inside. And you've got zeros. Let me do this properly this time. That's 0 0.5. Press the tab. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0. Let's pull the sliders back to 0 there. And the edge softness there. And there we have our full screen presenter. Let's just rewind that out. And have a look at what it looks like. Now you can see that it really has messed up there. So something's gone wrong. Let's figure out what that is. So as the screen should be flying to full screen, we instead have an old Windows Movie Maker effect, the old flip the screen kind of transition. That's awful, isn't it? Let's go to the graphs and see what we can figure out. Oh yeah, I can see it there. So what's happened here is really simple. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And let's rewind our frames a little bit as well. So what you can see happening here, let me just zoom out once. I think that's too much zoom there. So what's happened here really simply is if you have a look at the X rotation and the Y rotation, instead of going to 360, they've gone to zero. In other words, instead of rotating all the way to zero, they've rotated all the way back to zero. So what we should be able to do is just move our marker there, click on there like that where it says zero. And now in the place of zero, type in 360. And you can see it's gone up. We'll do the same here. Rather than zero, we'll move that marker to 360. So again, it's really simple to understand if you think about it like the hands of a clock. We want to go from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. It's easier to just go like that five minutes forward, 11 to 12, rather than rewinding the hand all the way back to zero. And that's what Lightworks was doing. It was rewinding the hand all the way back to zero. Let's have a look. Let me see if I've got the confidence just to play this. And yes, isn't that brilliant? So there we go. We've got our small clip on the laptop, just a couple of seconds, and then it zooms into the screen. And this is one of those effects that I think you can use it every time in a video because it will become like a thing that everyone knows you do or you use it once so that people kind of go, wow, I didn't expect that. I wouldn't use it every so often. I wouldn't use it on every other video because it's one of those effects, as I said, it'll either become a trademark or it'll become tiring. So you've got to decide which one it is. So even though Lightworks being very lightweight and very low on features, I think just with a bit of imagination and dare I say a little bit of hard work, you can maybe get some shots that will, if not match the big weights of the video editing world, at least get a little bit closer. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Think about clicking that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up and maybe think about hitting the bell notifications if you want to be notified every time a new video comes up.